Hey, all you beautiful people. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Either way, you made it here. We found each other and I'm so glad we did. So I have a story time today that is actually a request. And let me tell you, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. Sorry, I just had to <clears throat> get the throat ready for this one. So... This is a hospital story time because I spent most of my teenage years in the hospital. I have a 16th birthday, surgery, 15th birthday, surgery, 14th birthday in the hospital. I mean, the list, it just goes on and on and on. I spent years living in a hospital. Well, most people had high school. I had hospital and I had dialysis. And dialysis was limited. Let me take to the options of men <laughs> or boys, you should say, there was only two guys. One was named Levante, we'll call him, and the other one was named Mark, we will call him. Mark was a year older than me. Levante was three years younger than me. So, I mean, my options were limited, and um, I knew that both of them had, like, a crush on me, which was, like, so cute, because the nurses talked about it, and the doctors knew, and, like, everyone talked about it in the, in the dialysis area. So, I did dialysis Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It was hemodialysis, which is, well, they, they had a port right here, and it came out right here, and they hooked me up to a machine. It took my blood out, cleaned it, pumped it back into my body all good, all new. Took all the toxins out of my body. Great. Wonderful. Moving on. So, when you were hooked to this machine, you never knew how you were going to feel because when they're taking your blood out, pumping it through a machine, giving you medicine as well, and pumping it back into your body, your body's going to react in weird ways. Some days I felt terrible. Other days I felt great. This was a day that I just happened to feel pretty okay. And... I started dating Mark at a point in time. I don't remember exactly when we started dating. I just knew that, like, at first we just started talking on the phone, and the next thing you know, boom, we were dating. And he was my hospital slash dialysis boyfriend. And, which means we only saw each other at the hospital. We only saw each other during dialysis or if I was admitted to the hospital because that was a lot. So he would come after his dialysis treatment and see me. He came to dialysis alone. He was a really short, blonde hair, hazel-eyed with glasses boy that was average looking. Like I said, my options were limited. I'm not going to down him because I did date him for a few months and, you know, but like I said, my options were limited. <laughs> and so Mark and I got really close really quickly. We depended on each other. We kind of understood what each other were going through. So that's why we leaned on each other a lot. So we started getting so comfortable that we started doing sexual things in the hospital. And this is going to be a time that I was giving him a hand job while I was on dialysis and like I said this is a day where I was feeling kind of okay so you know nothing to worry about there all we had to worry about was getting caught right so Mark used to come and see me before his treatment because I would usually get there before him and finish before him so he would usually come and see me before his treatment now I always had my grandmother with me or my mother like I was never alone like he was and so I always had somebody with me. So for us to get alone time, I would have to make up some kind of excuse or something and get my mom or my grandmother to go downstairs to the gift shop and buy me some candy or buy me something to drink or whatever just so I could get some kind of alone time with my boyfriend. And you know how, like, a lot of teenagers would do sexual things in high school? Well, we did them in the hospital. Because that was our only option. Where do you want to do it at? So, um, he, he was sitting in a chair facing me. And I was in the chair 
facing outward. I was in a room by myself. I was the only underage girl, and they put me in a room by myself every single time. Uh, they always put Levante and Mark together and me in a room by myself, and then there were the other people that were on the houses, like the prisoners, the, the older people, like, that, you know, they were all in a big room, and then there were three separate rooms, and I was always in one of those three rooms, always. And so, we kind of had our space because of this. And we took that to, you know, we, we really took the advantage of that. And we, I would watch to see if the uh, nurses or anything were looking back towards me to see if doctors were coming or anything because you really never knew, like, maybe the sh machine would go off and the nurses would have to come running in or, um, you know, maybe the doctors were coming to see me. They always come and saw me, like, every dialysis treatment. Usually it was at the end of the, the dialysis treatment towards the end in the afternoon uh, is when they would come and see me, check on me, make sure I was okay, look at my sign, look at my vitals, blah, 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 blah. And so I knew that they would be coming, but I had at least a three-hour window because I was on dialysis for like three and a half hours. And so I had that window of opportunity. Uh, this particular day, I was with my grandmother, and I think I sent her down to the cafeteria for some candy or something. Not to the cafeteria, but to the gift shop for some candy or something, which gives me a, at least a good 20 minutes with my grandmother, maybe 30, because she would get to talking to someone or something. And I knew this, so I'm going to take full advantage of this. So that gave me at least a, like a 30-minute window to do whatever I wanted to do with Mark. So, he was sitting in a chair facing me. I was just sitting in a chair facing the nurses. The door was open. We start kissing, and it leads to me sliding my hand downward and unzipping his zipper and proceeding to give him a hand job while I'm hooked to this machine. The machine's right here. Mark's right here. I got a cord that's going from here all the way over, and I got a hand that's doing some work, you know? So... Anyway, um, so we were doing that, and at one point in time, I got distracted, I, um, and I remember that I heard a, <clears throat> like a grunt, or like someone clearing their throat, right? And that made me jerk away from what I was doing, look and see who it was. And it happened to be my doctor, and he was at least two hours early, okay? And I was not expecting this. I quit what I'm doing. Luckily, Mark was not well endowed, you guys, okay? He, he, he wasn't. Hmm. I don't want to put him down or anything, so I won't say numbers. Yeah, I will say numbers. At least four inches. <clears throat> okay, moving on. So he covered his fully erect penis with his shirt that just happened to be oversized. Thank God. Not like it really mattered. But it, it was. Just for the record. And, um, side note, he would always say that because he had a kidney disease is the reason he had a small dick. Okay, back to the story. So, um, I quit doing what I'm doing. And I focused more on the doctors and the nurse practitioner that walked with the doctor coming my way. And they <laughs> look at Mark and look at me. And the doctor is like, Courtney, how you doing today? And I'm telling him, like, oh, I feel fine. You know, we haven't had any, any problems, which usually we did. So, you know, I had to mention that, that I felt fine. We weren't having issues. And then... He kind of looked over at Mark and he was like, so Mark, uh, you got on your dialysis yet? Are you finished? And Mark was, didn't really say anything. He just kind of like shook his head no, like, because you got to think. One minute we're kissing, I'm giving him a hand job, right? The next minute, here's, I'm, I stop what, I completely stop what I'm doing and here's the doctors. 
so we have to like turn on serious face mode, right? And I was better at it than he was, so I kind of commanded the conversation a little bit and was just mentioning like to the doctors, you know, yeah, Mark just came to see me real quick. Um, he is going to go get on his ballot in his treatment in a second. You know, we were just talking, right? I'm trying to cover our asses is what I'm doing. And the doctor, I don't think he's really believing me much. I don't know what he saw because I'm not exactly sure if, uh, how long he had been looking in that room before he cleared his throat and jerked me back into reality. But, uh, he kept looking over at Mark, right? And Mark was not moving. He was not turning his head to face them. He just kept looking at me. And it was like the help me eyes, right? That's what he was giving me. So I tried every way in the world to talk to these doctors about anything to get them to leave and let Mark adjust himself and then go get on his treatment, which is where he should have been 30 minutes ago. So, yeah. After they finally, they finally do leave, eventually. After uh, addressing Mark a couple times and Mark not answering, they're, and they're getting a little bit annoyed, and they go out and talk to the nurses about how Mark needs to be on his treatment. And he kind of gets in trouble uh, for not being on his treatment yet. And uh, Mark was always getting in trouble on dialysis. He was getting in trouble for smoking marijuana. He was getting in trouble for coming to see me beforehand. He was getting in trouble for being late. Like, he was just always getting into trouble. You guys, he was getting in trouble for not taking his medicine. Like, he just really didn't care. And he was one of those people that had had a kidney before. And it, it lasted him, like, 14 years. Because he got a kidney when he was an infant. And... Then it failed, and he ended up getting a, a second kidney. So he was not taking care of himself, which I, I cannot say much because at one point in time, I was not taking care of myself either. But for the record, Mark was just, like, always getting in trouble on dialysis. These doctors, they really had it against him, I think, in a lot of ways because he was kind of a bad child, a bad kid. But I guess that was just what I was attracted to at that time. <laughs> And finally, when they leave, Mark is like, oh my fucking God, I cannot believe that just happened. And I was like, I, I know, like, I tried, I tried to cover all ass, like, I don't know if they believed me, I don't know what they saw, because, like, I was not paying attention at all. And he was, <laughs> he was like, well, I don't really care what they saw, like, if they saw that, that's fine. And I was like, no, it, it's definitely not fine. Like, they're going to tell my mom. They're going to tell my grandma. Like, if they saw something, I'm fucking busted. Good girl act done over. Which is what I have been playing up to this point. Because I was pretty much a good kid. Pretty much. Besides doing things like that. But everybody had a little rebel in them, you know? <laughs> everybody had problems when they were that age. But, uh, he fixes himself, he goes, gets on his treatment. And, you know, it probably isn't right, and it doesn't sound good to be like, yeah, I gave a hand job in the hospital. I gave a blow job in the hospital. I received oral in the hospital. I almost had lost my virginity in the hospital. Almost, but did. So, it sounds bad to say that kind of thing, because they've been... But, you know, like, you hear teenagers all the time talking about what they did in high school. Why is it any different? Because the hospital was pretty much our high school. It was drama field. It, it was just, like, three of us. But there was other kids that we knew that um, we saw, you know, occasionally at, like, doctor's visits and stuff. So that was always, like, hospital was my high school. And it sounds really bad to say, but that's just how it was. So for anyone that's going to be judging me, think back to you or someone you know done something in high school, whether you fucked, 
hand job, blow job, oral, whatever, bet you done something in high school. And if you didn't, you're a good kid, and I <laughs> applaud you. You stronger than me, girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm gonna end it here. I, I think that's enough of me rambling about giving a hand job in the hospital. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.